Man, they're not even trying to hide the product placement anymore, are they? Also, Kroon, you might want to make a run for it. I've seen enough of Toy Story 3 to know where this is going. Yada yada yada, and we enter into the episode proper with Manatsu accepting an extracurricular activity at a child daycare. Yeah, she kind of accepted this job for her club without any input from her fellow club members. Hey, anyone remember how Asuka was supposed to be the president of this club? No? Okay. Fortunately, they were all in it, for the most part, including Laura, who wouldn't have to worry about arousing any suspicion since it was off-campus. I mean, just as long as no one questions the fact that she can only move around by hopping. Eh, maybe they could just say she's imitating a kid's show. If I were a bunny, I'd... At the daycare, as usual, we got a good showing of each of our main heroine's personalities through their activities, like comparing Kabanatsu and Sango race these kids with the former going all out, while the latter held back to play at their pace. It's good stuff that showed the opposing doctrines of the two, and while I side with Sango's approach, I am glad they also acknowledged that neither took the wrong approach either. They were certainly faring better than their senpai with Minori flatly reading Momotaro, maybe next time you should try and get Yakuza to tell the tale. Or Asuka playing house as the baby. In the end, Sango proved to be the most successful caretaker with her playing makeup with the kids. Eh, still better than trying to make them wear these overpriced cosmetics. Meanwhile, the lair of the witch, the butler and maid duel were playing their own game of house. Actually, that starfish might be edible. Especially if it's post-movie era Patrick. As usual, the real big bad of the show dispatched his underling and again quote Jotaro. Back at the daycare, Laura was leading a pure mermaid cosplay event. Yeah, some of my commenters pointed out her skirt does seem to be based off of Minami's mold elegant. Though in Laura's case, she comes off more as a royal poser than anything, with even Sango kind of agreeing with me. <laughs> okay, I've been meaning to say this, but I think Sango just might be the understated meme facer of this season. And I don't mean the over-the-top fashion like Manatsu, but rather more in the subdued, chew, cynical sense. I mean, you can't convince me there's not at least a little bit of sarcasm in that face. Though, rather than saving these girls from the evil mermaid's influence, Sango instead focused on a lone boy named Wataru. He was more interested in learning more about insects rather than hanging out with the other kids. Thus, the young entomologist ends up sharing his bug knowledge with Laura, including illustrating the life cycle of a caterpillar. Well, interesting stuff, kid. But come on, be honest. You totally traced that off of a carapee, didn't ya? And while he might have developed a puppy love for the fish girl, Sango found him a playmate who also seemed to be interested in bugs. And while what's never outright stated in this episode, I think we assume the reason Sango was focused on these kids was because they kind of reminded her of herself as the odd kid out back when she was their age. Unfortunately, this was never taken beyond speculation because... Yeah, thanks a lot, show, for reminding me of Marge from To Your Eternity. Seriously, go check it out. It's one of my favorites of the season. This was then followed up by the arrival of Elda, who was after the surplus of motivation energy from those kids who always end up making a mess and expect their very busy uncle to clean up after them. Again, I must ask the same question as last week. Are these guys really the villains? Anyway, she made her monster out of some building blocks, and hey, I'm starting to realize we're not even halfway into this episode, and the team is already transformed. <laughs> Which meant we were getting a much lengthier and thankfully complete fight this week. And sure enough, after Elda quoted a show with a lot of wasted potential. <laughs> We got to see the unique ability of this monster. Oh. 
Boo! Part swarming sucks! Though I will say, nice Gundam sound effects. But yeah, thankfully this Zen Zen Ya Neda actually kind of lived up to being an upgrade monster type by giving our heroines an actual challenge rather than just being on our roadblock until Laura arrived to retrieve the energy as they didn't even have to do that this week. Speaking of whom, after finding her seal amongst the discarded toys, Laura protected the two bug kids who during all of this learned about their shared hobby. Kind of cute resolution to that subplot, though I would have liked to have seen Sango play a bigger part in getting these two together. She did at least get a good showing in the fight, with a better usage of her shield, plus a nice rider kick. Unfortunately, it didn't stop the monster from using the cheapness of his parts forming gimmick. No, 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 no. Guess that would explain why I was using Gundam sound effects. Fortunately, thanks to a mini movie rallying call, at least it didn't involve the flashlights, Manatsu was able to come up with a plan. <laughs> Barely a concept. You're taking their side? Still, they went with her 12% of a plan, and great where it's due, it did lead to a pretty cool sequence, possibly based off of the opening, though thankfully not reusing any animation. With that, the day was saved, and for whatever reason, Laura tried to hide the existence of the precure. I mean, I don't see any reason why she would, and oh my god, those kids have been replaced with aliens! Uh, anyway, I can understand her not wanting to reveal their secret identities, but why hide their very existence? Really, it's only a matter of time before people start noticing the superheroines fight the Bikini Bottom rejects. In any case, the episode ended with the Precure being thanked for their non-super activities, and Laura redeclaring her main goal wasn't to become a caretaker, but rather a queen, and once again, Zango has my favorite reaction face. Eh, this was a cute enough episode, with thankfully a much better fight than last week's. I will say, as usual, the personalities of our main heroines were front and center, which was good to see, along with them being nice role models to the kids. There was nothing really bad about this one, but at the same time also nothing really great, which considering that this was basically a Songo episode, I do kind of wish there was more. This was another episode written by the returning Mio Inoue, and what wasn't quite as great as her last outing in my opinion, it still had some decent character writing. Again, I really must emphasize that race scene as being a good example of cramming in a lot of personality within less than just a minute. That being followed up with the senpai characters showing their more vulnerable sides were also nice to see. All of that said, it does also feel like they're kinda spraying themselves a little too thin. I mentioned my theory about Sango focusing on the bug kids because they were abnormals like she was, and how ultimately that can only be a theory as she wasn't really able to spend a lot of time with them. Instead, that time was shared with Laura, who while it's nice to see her interact with humans other than Precure, that's kind of been her thing for the past few episodes now. As a result, Sango wasn't even involved in the bug enthusiasts getting together, even though there were clear signs that's what she wanted to do. But between the mermaid and the, to be fair, better than average fight this week, she didn't have enough time for that. Thus, while as a group, the Precure are being well built, I am starting to really want to see more individual developments beyond just Laura at this point. Songo in particular is a character I personally really like, and want to see more of her than just being the nice girl. Maybe show some more stuff relating to her past, and maybe even some snark that could rival Laura's. Only time will tell whether or not this sea rock gets more development or remains stationary. Just a little heads up, I probably won't be able to do a premiere next week as I've got to deal with stuff involving the big move. Still, I will try to get a video out as soon as I can, and hey, at least all of this hubbub over the relocation of my stuff is almost over, and I'll be able to get back to focusing on some of my bigger projects. And until then though, farewell for now my friends, and um... Yeah, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go pick up my niece. One enemy the pre-care might not be able to defeat? A toddler who can climb like a monkey.